Hello, everyone. Welcome to my first ever Wednesday live stream, which is somewhat spontaneous. And I'm really excited by the, the content today. And that's why I had to do a live stream today, because we're going to be drawing portraits from the June world. You can join me in Zoom. If so, it'd be great if you mute YouTube and yeah, so Sunday I went and saw June 2. Sorry, I'm just hearing myself. <laughs> Thank you. Wait a minute. Um, yeah. Who, who, who's got me on? Oh, is it? Oh, maybe it's me. Maybe it's me and it's not any of you. Oh, because I put the live stream on. I'm, I'm this, I've got my live stream playing in another window, so I'm very I'm confusing myself. We're going to do a bunch of portraits. I don't know how many. I'm going to do a giveaway. That was me. No one in Zoom. Um, come to Zoom if you would like to hang out and chat. And I'd like to um, put a disclaimer. I don't know if there'll be any spoilers talking about the storyline of the June world. I have I've read all of the books. There are six of them that go far beyond the film. But we are going to... Um, be yeah chatting about the film the world about some things and just hanging out and it's going to be really cool so i would encourage you all to to share your experience with the june universe uh, in the chat and let us know where you're drawing from what you are going to be drawing with and i will show you um this drawing that i did yesterday of stilgar I posted it, um, there's a time lapse um, all over the place, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And it's a bit bigger than I usually do my live stream sketches. And I did it with a parallel pen and it was super fun. And as I did this sketch, I was like, oh, I have to, I have to do a live stream. This is just so much fun. Just the, the visual world, the cinematography, the photography is just so awesome. And um, the the story is just so cool there's so much that i enjoy about it and would love to hear about your experience with it as well whether you've read the books or seen the films or i have no idea what we're talking about but just want to hang out and draw um let let me know and we'll do some drawings so i asked on instagram some i asked everyone and some dear friends responded who we should draw and um, got some suggestions. There, there was just, I, I have so many um, references selected. Uh, and we're just going to do a few of them. <laughs> but here we have um, Timothy Chalamet, who I've drawn a couple times as Paul Atreides, who is the, um, yeah, I guess the reluctant messiah figure of this story. And we'll start with 10 minutes, but I'm, I'm not feeling like super strict to the 10 minute portrait format today. But um, it's it's a format we know and love if you've been to my live streams before. So, um, so let's just start with 10 minutes and see how we go. And these black and white, there are so many cool images of, and there are images which I've discovered the past couple of days, which have been taken by photographers that were not part of the film, but were taken on set, which are really amazing. And it's a book called June Exposures, um, which I bought the ebook of, which has some really incredible images in. Um, and this is not from that book, but is, um, oh, who was it? Jack. I've got to let you know who the photographer is because um, Jack, Davison photo on Instagram, I believe, took this one, and it's really, really cool. Um, hello, Wizza. All right. So let's say we'll start with 10 minutes, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like if I just want to keep going today, then I might just keep going. But... We'll start with 10 minutes and see what happens. Um, I am providing reference pictures over here. 
Um, there's no link to them because I don't own any of these. I've grabbed them from Instagram and from the June trailer videos on YouTube, but um, I'm not going to be providing a link to these images. You can just um, screenshot them or draw along. I have them in my, at least four of them are in my Instagram stories that you can grab as well if you would care to do so. So um, let's do it. And this is a bit different for me. Usually I have my reference right next to my workspace when I'm doing these live streams, but today it's over on the on the computer because um, that's how it is today. <laughs> um, I will be looking at the chat as things progress, um, as I relax a bit, because just just like 15 minutes ago, I was putting my my dear child to bed and was like, oh, things are going to be ready in time. And is this why I don't do it this early on a Wednesday and all sorts of things. But here we are. It's, it's working out and it's going to be great. Um, I'm working on Hanamura Nostalgie paper with a parallel pen at the moment, which is a very juicy, inky calligraphy pen and everyone drawing along you can of course use whatever you like do whatever you like yeah so um i was going to say as i started talking about these beautiful like on on set images that there's some really cool uh black and white photography which has been done um greg fraser who's the cinematographer worked on this um, June Exposures book, uh, parallel to to being behind the camera, um, taking still photos as well. And I've just, I, I've always loved behind the scenes kind of stuff. And seeing the, the photos, like the candid photos that he took, like in between takes on the set, um, it's really interesting seeing all these characters kind of in their downtime <laughs> and and some of the the images are just really um just such beautiful photos and it's always nice to have really awesome reference to work from um yeah let me relax <laughs> thank you shannon for the relax prompt i i'm i will get there at some stage i'll be able to relax uh, i'm already getting in in the zone <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing another live stream on Saturday which will be focused on observational drawing uh, measuring by eye techniques and stuff and it's going to be kind of the lead-in to my observational drawing and watercolor portraiture class, which is starting end of next week. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I was thinking after going to see June part two on the weekend, I was like, oh, I'd love to do a live stream of, of these portraits. And Normally I would live stream on a Saturday, but because I already have something else planned for Saturday, but I felt a sense of urgency and desire, and I really wanted to to draw from this world. Um, things just fell into place that um, today's a possibility, so it's uh, fun to be able to be here. Um, I'll, I'll give away one of my originals, like I like to do in these multiple portrait live streams. So if you put in hashtag I want to win <clears throat> at some point throughout the live stream, uh, one of you will win. Uh. 
<laughs> cool, Shannon. You read um on my Instagram to get to my link tree and made you relax. Yeah, it's good to remember to to breathe and to relax, and it's also good to get excited. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, okay, wow, what, the, the, the internal checklist, like, oh, what, what are all the things that we have done? And, and the, yeah, the reference, I wasn't even sure exactly what we'd be working from. Um, but I've, I've spent a bit of time looking into, I spent quite a bit of time today, collecting reference images. And I've been, yeah, what's that channel? Yeah. I do. I do many things. Lots of juggling. I have been listening to the Dune soundtracks a lot. I've actually been working on taxes. Uh, <laughs> Um, so usually I like to listen to podcasts and audiobooks, but that doesn't really work while trying to do taxes, I've found. Um, so I just want to have some, some ambient kind of sensations on it. It's very dramatic going through <laughs> all of these numbers with, um, with the Dune soundtracks. And they're like, on Spotify, there are four different um, albums that you can listen to. There's the June 1 soundtrack, then there's the Art and Soul of June soundtrack, which is to accompany the art book, which came out with the first film. There's the June Sketches by Hans Zimmer, which I guess was like concepts and ideas for the soundtrack. Um, and then there's the June 2 soundtrack. So, and they're, they're all kind of interrelated and a lot of recurring themes and... Um, yeah, it's really interesting. So I'm kind of living in the soundscape of um, Hans Zimmer's June music, which is, no, no, I, 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 what do you have? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, there's, there's so much I, I really appreciate the f about the film. I haven't been to the cinema for years. I used to go a lot um, back in the day. And I, it was, yeah, it was cool to go and just to have that um, big immersive experience. Mm. It is, it is, yeah. Denis Villeneuve also um, directed Blade Runner. Is, is Arrival like 20 years old or something? Okay, because I think I saw a film called Arrival a long time ago, but I have not seen that. Ha yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Has anyone anyone YouTube seen Arrival? Lisa was just telling me about it in Zoom. If you want to join us in Zoom and you can find the way, um, you're welcome to come come chat with us. Um was there, was there a film called Arrival like in the nineties? Or am I dreaming? which was also about contact with uh, uh, alien. 
Aliens. Yeah. There's there's a, a really cool short film. I think it's called The Menu by Denis Villeneuve as well, which um, is dark and gluttonous and um, very bizarre. Uh, and I think you can watch it on, on YouTube. <laughs> cool. That that's a pretty cool experience to have. Tsikario. Okay, cool. I've not heard of it. All right. Our 10 minutes is up. I'm going to go a little bit longer cuz I feel like this um like a couple minutes uh, if, if you've never been to these live streams before i often do um 10 minute portrait live streams and going into this i wasn't really sure how long i would spend each portrait because i don't know it feels i feel like i i i want to spend a bit more time on some of them um but the the piece i did yesterday of still I'm not sure exactly. Maybe it was like 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, and a bit bit bigger than like this sketchbook. So that was that was really fun to work on. I listened to a really cool video today about um, the Arabic world and islam as the like the the foundations of the the june world and cultures and um particularly the fremen culture and a lot of the language used in the story and i put the link in the description of this video because it's super interesting um and really worth watching listening to all right maybe maybe that's that's it for me for now. You can keep drawing if you want. I'll just look at the comments because I, I haven't really responded to comments yet and it's always a nice thing to do. Um, uh, who, who has seen the David Lynch one? Um, so Chan, you said you saw it when, when you were little. <laughs> Are the book... Yeah, the, yeah, there are six books and, and I've, um, I've devoured them. It's... It would be really interesting to talk to someone who's um, who's also. I, I don't want to tell all the story because it gets really <laughs> interesting, um, to say the least. Uh, Ike has never seen the movie. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I was kind of bored on the first one, but the second one was awesome. <laughs> cool, cool. It'd be interesting. Like what? Um, I guess the first one was setting the scene a lot. It'd be interesting to know, like, if you have reflected upon that, why you thought the first one was boring. Because I, I just, I just loved it. Um, really? I feel like there was more action in the second one, right? That there was kind of the, there was, yeah, the story and character development. Um, uh, what weren't, what weren't you expecting, Louisa? <laughs> I don't know because I was not expecting this. Oh, just that that this was happening at all. Hey, Maya's here. Hello, Maya. Um, cool. Lewis is ready. I'm excited to see what you do, Lewis. Um, ah, yes. Here we go. So, news from off. I'm glad you want to win. I will show you something which I would like you to do. Do this. Hashtag. I want to win. And whoever wants to win one of these, use that hashtag. And at the end, I can do like this random magic selection thing um, where StreamYard, the, the platform I'm using to live stream with, will select the winner. So hashtag I want to win for a chance to win. And your odds are pretty good. 
at the moment, 100%. If, uh, <laughs> if news from off, if you put the hashtag in front of that. Um, <laughs> Aha, okay, okay. <laughs> the, the odds are dramatically getting worse, but still pretty good. <laughs> um, why not create and it's got a very interesting way I post your portraits. I wonder how you structure invisible guide in your head works. I do a lot of time sketch practice and that helps a lot. Um, and next week is going to be, I, I would invite everyone, love you all to come draw with me on Tuesdays in my Zoom room. Um, and that has helped me so much. Uh, a lot of time portrait practice, looking at a lot of faces and, and practicing with ink. Ink has also helped me develop so much in, in the, the confidence and the way I, I do my mark making. Um, yeah, so th those are a couple of things which are very, very helpful. Um, because ink really forces you to either be careful or to make a mess. <laughs> And in some way, by making a mess, then you maybe start to become a bit more careful and a bit more decisive about your mark making, and and just a lot, a lot of practice and observation. So, and I figured out what was it in the past four years of these time portrait sketches, I've done like over five thousand portraits or something, just like between thirty seconds and six minutes. So a lot of practice helps, um, and it's just been consistent every Tuesday, two hours, doing this practice has. Um, really helped and it's therapy it's just so much fun it's just so much fun hanging out with people and doing it it, it might sound like oh i have to do five thousand portraits to be able to do this um but that's not true you, it's just you come to it and just relax and start to observe and flow um and it's just fun because we we come up with these random stories <laughs> as as we're drawing and hanging out and it's it's a really really fun way to, to practice. Okay, so our next request was uh, Duncan Idaho. Um, I've heard some, <laughs> uh, the person who requested this reference said, this is really a hard reference. So here we go, that's what you get. Um, <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put the 10 minute time on again and see what happens. Um, Duncan Idaho in, in the the f further in the story in, in further books is a really um it's interesting the the kind of legacy of, of duncan idaho um which yeah it i found it really interesting like n knowing the story knowing the the books watching the films I'm I'm very good at just kind of giving into the cinematic experience um, and letting whatever happens happen. Uh, the suspension of disbelief, like when I just go to watch something, I'm just like present with it. Um, and it's kind of, yeah, it's, but it's, it's interesting watching something where you already know like what's going on and what's going to happen. But yeah, I, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And as I mentioned, just that I, I love the cinema, cinematography. It's the, and the, the world. Um, and also, um, yeah, there's so much of the story which is so uh, irrelevant. Um, and the, the video that I mentioned, which I've linked to about the um, Arabic and Islamic roots of the Dune story. Um, he explains some, because he, the, the guy who made that video talks about the, uh, a lot of the Jakobsa, which is the Fremen language, which a lot of it in the film is just like made up by um, this language maker. <laughs> um, but a lot of the books and terms um, um, the words, the terms that are used in the books are um, either inspired by um, Arabic words or um, kind of play with the ideas a bit. And, and it's really cool in this video because this guy like breaks down these really important terminologies which uh, recur throughout the story and it's um, 
super interesting. And that is um, that has is I think a, a valid and interesting critique of the film that there are um, mm, it's perhaps an uh, yeah there's a story which is so inspired um, visually um, and in the the ideas and the language so inspired by. Um, Middle East and North African uh, cultures and and history and philosophy, um, that there are not many, not many actors uh, of North African and Middle Eastern um, descent or, or or yeah from there, um, like that would be. The, the desert was filmed, um, the, the desert scenes are filmed in Jordan and like being in that part of the world, it's that I think a lot of people, particularly in Jordan, um, like there are a lot of people who worked on it that were from there perhaps, but in the cast, um, not so much. All right, at some point I'm going to have to this yeah really interesting um, orientation of the head here. This was the last reference I picked, and it was like so so hardly any time before starting, and I just like I was like okay Duncan Idaho, <laughs> uh, duck duck go give me something, and I was like oh this looks cool, <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> It does look cool, and it's just oh yeah, I I just love the hair. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really cool. The um, so because of uh, the time change being out of sync in. The States and Europe. Our dear friend Jane has hosted some some sessions the last couple of weeks, and also this coming Tuesday we'll be hosting another one um, to to make up for that that time overlap. And Jane has been doing these around the world poses and um, face workout poses to um, get people doing some pretty unusual poses to practice drawing from, which is cool. And if there's anyone here who's in the Let's Face It class, I'm the last Saturday of each month, I'm doing um, live sketch sessions as well. And last time someone requested that, doing some un untypical uh, head orientation poses. So we'll be doing something similar to that next time as well. <laughs> this is turning into a bit of a cartoon, but that's fine. <laughs> it's, it's who? <laughs> cool. Oh, oh no. Um, if, if, if it really goes downhill, so it, here's the thing, if you're afraid of ruining the page because you've done something good on it and then you do something where <laughs> you're, you're not feeling so good about it anymore. Um, in the past, I have like blacked out the ugly drawing <laughs> um, and then kind of compositionally used it somehow. Or you could just like stick a new piece of paper on top and and put something else in place of the ugly drawing <laughs> or the drawing you're not happy with. So don't be afraid to draw on the page because you've already done something you like. That's, um, I know the feeling, the terror 
of mess of messing it up and it it's not a helpful feeling <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah to, to have a secret reveal Shall I, um, does anyone have any opinions on whether I should use ink all the way through this live stream or should I um, do watercolor portraits as well? That is right. I would definitely not be putting watercolor on top of this ink work. Hmm. <laughs> I got some ink which I haven't actually tried it out yet, but someone told me that it's waterproof. And one of these pens, I think I, I refilled some of this other ink into, and I want to try it out because it would be amazing to be able to do an ink drawing and let it dry and then just a watercolor on top of it. I think that. I don't, I, I don't know yet. I'll have to experiment and get back to you. Yeah. Oh, you mean the pens die if you refill different ink into it? Ah, ah okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, cool. The cleaner is cheaper than the ink. Well, that's good. Mm. <laughs> oh, here we have a uh, Elaine has has something to share with us. The Kurotake Black Ink 60 is waterproof. I've just tried it and it works brilliantly with watercolor. Mm, that's interesting. Cool. Um, a dip pen is a bit of a departure. If you only knew, <laughs> I spent years like only working with um, dip pens and calligraphy pens and stuff. So it's been a while, um, but it's more of a return than a departure FX node. Um, I want to win. I want to win. If you want to win, put in hashtag I want to win. Um, don't. Ba Barbara says you, you shouldn't. So no one else should. Um, Enter the giveaway. <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> Saw the original movie in the 90s, and even though it was three hours and a lot to capture, found it complete. The director decided to divide the story in three movies, which is cool, but death the second one. Are we talking about the original Dune? That was in the 80s, right? Um, Patrick Stewart? What? There was another one. There was Kyle, Kyle McLaughlin as um, Paul. That was interesting. The, the David Lynch. Ah, so cool. So funny. Um, 
right, I'm just reading comments. You can you can finish your drawings if you like. I would like I would like to keep working on this, but um, I'm gonna stop. Yes, Sting was Fade, Fade Ralpha, which is like oh, that, that was yeah such a such um so different the 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 eighties version. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, you can ask what pen it is. You certainly, certainly can. Oh, that's a nice Welsh dragon on your face. Um, this is a 3.8 mill millimeter Pilot Parallel pen. So you can make marks with it that are 3.8 millimeters wide. And then you turn it on the side and you can do like super fine stuff with it too, which is really cool. I, I just love this pen. Um, and I haven't done like such quick sketches with it for a while, so it's interesting. It's it forces you to make different decisions, and um, but let's continue. Elaine, cool. Good morning. Nice that you're you're up so early and here drawing with us. Um, next pose, Jessica, Lady Jessica, Reverend Mother. Such a cool character. What? Ah, oh, so interesting. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there are so, so many amazing images. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of it visually. Um, like it's directly, it, it's like, it's like our, it, humans have gone into space and it's like way, 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 way far in the future, but it is actually rooted in um, like Middle Eastern history. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's so interesting what happens. Um, all right. So this is maybe, oh, look at those blue eyes. Should I do watercolor now? I don't know. Mm. What did you say, Shannon? Yeah. I think they've got some, got some pretty good makeup artists. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, the, the transformations that people have gone through to become these people. So this is a different paper. This is a watercolor paper. Um, and I think I'll do watercolor. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, that's, yeah, super interesting suit. <laughs> um, oh, this is, so there, there's another really incredible image, which um, was from Jack Davison, which I have here as well. This is so cool. So this is, this is like one of the ones that was taken on the set. And I think it was maybe used in a, a magazine article. Um, so cool. And on his... Uh, Jack Davison photo on Instagram. Um, and there are a few posts that have a, a selection of photos and they're just it's so cool. And there's something about these like behind the scenes. Um, uh, there's something, it feels like it's like an enriching the experience of, of this like imaginary world that there are like these um, grainy uh, lo-fi photos that are like taken on the set and it's, um, I don't know, it just kind of, I feel like it adds uh, a really wonderful kind of um, depth. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's really cool. Um, all right, but I'm not going to draw from this one, so I'll, <laughs> I'll bring the other one back up. Um, oh, another, another really cool uh, image was this one. <laughs> Um, but maybe maybe we'll just do a bunch of, of June live streams. But this is really cool. A closer crop. 
Um, so I think I'll work on this one now. And maybe this will be more like 20 minutes. Let's see. I will do uh, 10 minutes and then once that ends, uh, 10 minutes again and then see see how I feel where I'm at. Um, okay, I can't zoom out any further where my camera is. So just going to make sure I'm kind of Thank you, Fred. Fred Stone. Uh, a friend of many names. It's funny um, knowing people across platforms with different different names, and yeah, it's it's cool. <laughs> Uh, by the way, if you are drawing along, painting along, however you are sketching or creating, uh, it would be really awesome to see your work. So wherever you share, I would love you to tag me and use the hashtag drawing with Dylan. Because um, I would love to see and share what you create as well. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah it was, it was just it's like yes i can i can just sit and be sick in my chair um yeah 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 fair fair enough <laughs> oh yeah, that would be that'd be really interesting. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's interesting just like experiencing nature um having yeah not having had limited contact with nature to get into like the the wilderness is a, a pretty special experience so interest yeah, yeah. I would love to know about people's desert experiences. Um, sandy, because a big important part of the, the June world is the, um, the, the ecological um, storytelling. There, there are so many things that are so relevant in these stories um, that this so yeah, there's the ecological thing, there's this desert planet, and there's a, a prophetic vision about turning it into paradise. Um, 
and and it's so interesting i i grew up um fairly close to desert in in south australia it's really hot and dry um but close to the coast um but in south australia uh there's like there's a lot of water control like in summer you're there's water restrictions like that people shouldn't be watering their lawn which is just a huge waste of water uh, in in summer or you do it in the morning and the evening but not during the day because it will just evaporate and it's a waste of water and there's so there's like water restrictions because there's it's quite even though in germany um like it's been very dry which is where i live now in the past few years it doesn't have the same kind of um it's not not dry like south australia is dry although it has been a concern um until like the past six months have felt pretty wet but it has has, has been unusually dry uh here um but there's there's um a big thing uh in on um, the dune planet the like the importance of of water and the, the value of water and it's interesting because like in the story there are these imperial colonizing forces which come to extract uh, spice from the planet and there's a direct correlation to uh, arrakis being like iraq and um, the extraction of oil from uh, arab nations but um But it's interesting that the so that's like the, the most valuable substance like in the universe or whatever but on the planet that water is actually the most like most treasured thing amongst the um the fremen people and and i think that's a real a really significant thing to to be aware of like in, in our world as well even though sometimes it seems like there's plenty of water it's um it's a very precious thing and important to keep it clean and um access to to clean water is very important so it's interesting that that's like um it has a, a value beyond the perceived value of of what the um the colonizers are coming to extract from the planet and there's also yeah so there's like the whole um there are there's so many themes in in the story which are so interesting and relevant there's the um yeah the colonialism the 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 resistance of the indigenous people to the planet which is interesting because it's it's like coming out from Earth and going and colonizing the, the universe, I guess, all these different planets. But it's like so far in the future that these are the people that belong to the planet. They've been there so long. And um, and an interesting thing, which I, I don't know if it will really go into it, but part of the backstory of the June universe is that um there was a time of thinking machines artificial intelligence and these machines um ended up uh posing a threat to uh like human existence i guess so there was um the butlerian jihad the the struggle um jihad translates to struggle um but it's often referred to as the holy war um against yeah against the thinking machines and so there are in in the first movie there are a couple of characters which um which they're mentats and they're like human human computers basically they have like incredibly trained memories and um they can calculate and like mind-blowing kind of figures and stuff and they they've trained their minds to be like computers um, but there, there is like a, after, after this war, there was, um, 
like a, a ban against the development and use of computers, which is really interesting, like <laughs> with the the current kind of advance and of uh, AI and a lot of things that are going on. And so that's something that, all right, that's 10 minutes. We'll put on another 10. <laughs> um, so that's also like super relevant. Uh, you know, the ecological stuff. And, and it's interesting, the Oh, there's, there's just so much to it, which is really interesting. There's like the the main character, Paul Atreides from the first sketch that we did. Um, he's like this reluctant messiah figure and um, yeah, and that's so interesting. Like in, I was talking about it with a, a friend uh, who who's seen it, that um, the way that shifts I feel like that that was something that would have been, I guess, the pacing of a film when you go to the cinemas, you know, it's so different to a book, of course. But um, that transformation would be from the reluctant messiah to the not so reluctant. <laughs> um, like that, that'd be interesting. Like there's so much more to it, like to that experience, the... Um, the water of life scene and what happens there there's it's it's really in the film i felt like that wasn't as kind of like mind blowing and perception altering as it kind of felt in the the books all right i don't think there's much of a likeness at the moment but um i feel like the drawings fun so Put some watercolor into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, the um, the pacing, the pacing of cinema compared to uh, a long winded book that has taken, you know, years and years to write. Um, it's a very, a very different experience where it's like you sit down for a couple hours and it's like, whoa. Um, <laughs> yeah yeah it's like who 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 were we just talking about what was <laughs> ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> when did you say the early or late? 61 um when was june that was also the 60s right yeah yeah i don't know i think it, it's i i don't know i i listen to so much that i forget so much um but i did listen to the um frank herbert biography that was written by his son and so like i six okay 65 yeah the film didn't come out until much later um to the <laughs> chagrin of frank herbert i think oh yeah yeah um there's a documentary um called the i think it's called the greatest science fiction film never made by alejandro Jodorowsky, and it was it was going it was like quite deep into the preparation of being made but it didn't end up being made um and then and then like star wars beat june to it although um it seems like there's a, a lot of kind of um a lot of the science fiction stuff that was happening like in that era that i think there was a lot of cross-pollination of ideas and stuff or um a borrowing perhaps of of ideas and so june was supposed to be made but then didn't end up being made and then star wars came out and that became like the star the um science fiction thing um and yeah it would have been interesting if the like what would have been like if if june um if like the story of june had come out before star wars that would be it's an interesting idea I just um I was gonna paint and then I decided I would do the tattoos a bit more with pencil because I realized it would take too long to wait for the paint to dry to then change the tattoos after. So Ah oh. uh, it might be going a bit longer than twenty minutes with this. <laughs> just saw those two minutes left I'm like what? It's interesting um, in the the storyline beyond the first three books that the the universe gets much bigger. Um, like there are, we see in the second movie like the 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 emperor um, figure who comes into play, and that the, there is also like opposing forces beyond the realm so there's like this this vast empire um but there are also there's also things beyond the empire which is uh, there's a lot of really interesting um stuff i i don't see how it could, could be possible to to really um film it all <laughs> and i i saw an interview where denny vino also said that um he'd like to film three and and that's always thinking about at the moment. 
but the first two films are actually the first book so there's um five more books to go in the storyline but i remember when i first started um listening to the audiobooks that uh, a friend said that the first three are really good and then it starts getting really weird and um I, I would say it's really weird, but I also really liked it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really curious about um, the, the, the script from the tattoos. Um, because it, it looks like inspired by uh, some script that exists now and it would be like interesting to know where where that was kind of uh... all right 20 minutes is up but um oh this feels like i feel like i'd like to spend a bit longer on it um how's everyone else doing Keep going and and on youtube people are happy to uh, keep working on this a bit longer This is definitely a, a reference that I could easily spend an hour working on. It's been really interesting um, pushing watercolor um, in shorter time frames, which is something that I was previously um, very reluctant to do. But working in ink, years of working with ink um, and all of the, the timed sketch practice definitely helped to gain the confidence to, to do a quick drawing and then to start painting. And if it doesn't work out, I guess I can do another quick drawing and try again. I kind of knew with like the tattoos and this awesome uh, headdress that there was like way too much information for such a quick portrait, but it's it's still interesting to to try um, to try, try and do things that seem impossible within a given time frame or whatever restrictions you place upon yourself, just to just to kind of force yourself to make decisions and. Um, gain the experience of just trying to um, figure figure things out hmm. oh. <laughs> that was that was an that was a uplifting sound for a for a dying battery <laughs> Start singing. Zan, has the the drawing hive done a June session yet? Cool. 
It was a what? Okay, cool. Hi. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she is amazing. She does so much. I, I'm always impressed, like, I, I can make the time to do the things that I host and I'd love to do more. <laughs> but when I see people come to my sessions and then they're doing like six other things as well, it's like, wow, it's so cool. Just the amount of, of work and practice people are putting in. It's very, very inspiring. It's cool that there's so much available to do. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this dry and maybe I will return um, to this piece. And I have so, I have some really exciting <laughs> reference up next. The Lord Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Um, are you ready? Oh, look at this photo. Look at look at this image. It's so good. This is from this photo is in a, a book that I have called The Art and Soul of Dune, um, and there's this really nice big picture in there. The book is so cool. It has a lot of concept art um, and the, the development of the, um, the visual look of the, the film. And, uh, and this is in there. <laughs> That's really cool. There's also some like behind the scenes stuff in that. I guess it's something that's it's often been inspiring for me. The Lord of the Rings was also um, super inspiring. Uh, all the behind the scenes stuff kind of set me on the path of of doing art as an adult. Um, should I do this with watercolor or just the ink? This would be pretty cool ink. It's like so inky. So I think he's actually in a spice bath. Um, and it looks like oil. So, so cool. How's everyone doing on YouTube? Hasn't been any comments for a while. Let me know you're still here. 14 of you are still here, that's nice. And um, Barbara doesn't want me to tell you, but if you want to enter the giveaway, you can put in hashtag I want to win and Barbara still might win. Um, <laughs> put that into the chat if you feel so inclined. I, I definitely want to return to the Jessica piece. Um, I'm not content. Louisa says like and subscribe. Tell me in the chat if you're watching and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Now would be the time. If not now, when? <laughs> Who has never been to one of my live streams before? Who doesn't know who this is? Such a nice photo. It's so, so cool. Um, so this is interesting because it's like, there's so much going on. It's actually like this, it's a pretty clear form, but because of all the reflections and all the, the goop, um, there's, there's a lot going on. So it's interesting if you squint at it, it's like some really clear highlights and otherwise it's like really dark, like the nose and below the eyes, there's some really cool highlights and the lips that is really important, like defining um, highlights. So if it was like ink, I was wanting to do like a, like a mid-tone kind of wash and then maybe doing the, huh. I wonder if I use the parallel pen and then just kind of wet the ink to push it around. It'd be a bit of an experiment, could be interesting.
What's everyone else working with? Oh, oil pastel, it's very oily. Mm. Um, I have a Patreon. If you're, uh, if you're interested in having um, guided instruction, in addition to draw along sessions, um, you can check out my Patreon. If you um, would like to support and contribute to me doing these things. And thank you for those of you who already do. I love you. Um, and I am, I'm in the middle of so I do almost monthly tutorials on, on Patreon and in, I'm in the middle of doing a, a four part course focused on facial features. Uh, but I've done a lot of different videos addressing all sorts of different things that people have, have asked me to address. And it's a, a fun way when people are having a particular challenge to say, oh, how would you kind of go about doing this? So well, like, this is tricky. Um, to be able to uh, like dedicate a, a tutorial session just to, to covering that topic. And amazingly, perhaps like in uh, parallel to release of my, my new uh, watercolor class, which is coming out, um, I've had quite a few new supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much, everyone. And it's, um, yeah, it's really cool. So thank you to everyone who supports me there. This, um, this character is, is pretty interesting. It's like the, the indulgence and power um, represented by this figure. The, yeah, decadence and And he's like so big that he's not able to move of his own accord. That he's got these um, devices implanted in him to to help him be able to move. I that's something between the David Lynch version and this one. Like I, I, I much prefer this um, this Lord Baron. The um, especially after seeing this and, and going back to the David Lynch version. Um, it's, it, it's all, it, it's, it's a whole different vibe. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's the like the the kind of the gravity uh, of this, the the ways portrayed in these films is really uh, intense. Hey Guru, thank you.
Mm -hmm. Oh wow. So they were like uh, homesteading, you mean like living self sufficiently? Or. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seeing the stars in the desert is is pretty pretty special. And it's interesting what you're talking about about um having to bring your own water. Um I I lived on a a ship for half a year and and that is so interesting because you're surrounded by water but you can't drink it. <laughs> Um, and so there, there is um, a reverse osmosis machine on board, which um, takes the salt out of the water so that it's palatable. Um, but like you, you can't just leave the water running um, because there's, there are so many people on board and a limited amount of, of like usable water. And, um, and that, that was a really, that's quite an interesting experience to to be surrounded by water but to be really conscious of its value of of fresh usable water and there that um the stars there were also amazing because there were just no no lights but it's i think it's it's really important to to have a kind of experience where you realize that um you know, you really need to take care of your water and become conscious of the way you use it and how, how important it is. And like, I feel like more than, <laughs> more than growing up in the driest state in Australia, <laughs> I feel like living on the ship for half a year taught me more about being careful with water than than living like in such a, a dry climate, which was interesting, not something I would have expected. Because also there, it's like, like what I was saying earlier about the water restrictions. Um, I can remember also, uh, you know, people washing their cars on, on the road <laughs> and just hosing down the car. And it's like, it's almost, almost in the desert. Where, where people are doing these things and it's just it's uh bizarre just them the lack of awareness of of like that the the water oh, yeah yeah
Ja, ja, ja. Ja, and that's that's something that I guess um another another level of interest to the dune world to me this desert planet and the the understanding of the value of water and and of life and uh, the colonization and disregard of the indigenous people um like coming growing up in australia i, I feel um like it's particularly relevant um and thinking like <clears throat> There's this the story of these, uh, is it Burke and Wills? Well, like these British adventurers who um, like went out discovering Australia and they ended up dying in the, in, in the country surrounded by food and they were just not aware of their surroundings. And it's like the people who have lived there for so long, um, the, the traditional custodians of the land that yeah, these people come from Europe and totally uh, like ignorant to to what surrounds them and not in sync with it and just have this attitude of um, just being able to explore and extract and use things and then just not really aware of the the value of what surrounds them. Um, yeah, and I Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a special kind of um, imperial ignorance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh, this is such a cool image <laughs> um, of such a. Uh, a dreadful character. Um, it's just this, the highlight, which is here, it's just the, fo the fold of neck fat. It's, um, yeah, so there's this highlight here and it's just like the ears come down and normally the jawline would go down here, but his neck is so, um, massive that it's like folding around and reflecting light that's what that highlight is <laughs> um y yes um i i i've just uh, the quest a question have you watched any of the films before the director's june so be before the new one Denis Villeneuve's June. Yeah, I saw the David Lynch one. And I didn't even realize there was like another one in between until someone just mentioned it. Um. Oh, like a series? Oh. Okay. Is that the pigeon saying it's bedtime? So this, I um, these were the the four character recommendations when I asked who we should draw, and I, I think this will, this will be the last one for for today's live stream. Um, but this, 
uh, this is a theme we could explore more in, in future live streams because there's just the um such a rich visual world and yeah i was just grabbing screenshots from the from the movie trailers on youtube and just w within that it's like wow this it's just so so beautifully um composed and made and It's the the second movie, the end of it is the end of the first book. And that would be like a story, yeah. But it it's it still feels open because there's there's more to come, but yeah. <laughs> um there's still a bit of that there's still a bit of that feeling. Um I'm gonna. Oh, I have a really good inky brush. Where is it? I'm just gonna look in my drawer of supplies. See if I can find this inky brush. not the one I was looking for but it will do um, I've I'm reluctant to to get my watercolor brushes really inky because I'm doing a lot of watercolor recently oh this is a, a bit yellow um, I'm just gonna grab some of the ink over here and with water uh, just kind of like wash that into these mid-tone areas. So you can wash inky brushes and be able to use them with light colors again, uh, with soap and caressing massage the brushes. I've talked about a few times recently. Um, but it, it takes a bit of care and attention to, to get the ink out of them and because I've been doing so much watercolor recently I I don't want to just uh, inky up the brushes again so decided to grab another brush oh that's exciting Yeah, it's nice to have some big flat brushes. <laughs> so this this paper is starting to buckle. The Hanamula Nostalgi paper is not not the best wet media paper, but um, it'll it'll flatten out again a bit. But um, this is a paper that I really like using with, with ink. Oh, did you just tip a, tip a glass of water on it? This is fun. Uh, I like this image so much. The the wetness of it, the darkness, like the just amazing contrast and this. Yeah, it's ah super fun. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, so it'd be interesting. You, you can consider from, from the pieces that I've done, if you've entered the giveaway, um, is this the piece you would like hanging on your wall? <laughs> oh, and before I finish, I will I will return to Jessica a little bit because I feel like a bit more definition on on that last portrait would be nice. And there's it would be cool now, like it could add some some more layers to the the oily spice bath, um, but maybe. For now, for today, for this session, that's maybe enough. <clears throat> There's something something about it at this stage that I really like at the moment. So, um, All right, cool. Sometimes at the end of these live streams, there are like 10, 10 portraits and today it's just four, which is uh, nice and different. Um, cool. Ah, that, that was such a fun image to work from. Um, just let that dry a bit and see how, how nice and warped the, the paper is. And so everyone can continue. Thank you, Fred. Oh, it feels so cool. That one feels really good. Like, ah, oh, it's super fun. Um, ah, what a cool image. Um, so different to this. <laughs> I, I noticed as I started working with the pencil on this one, I was like, oh, it's, there's something about like the directness of the ink, even though it's like, you know, there's there's the risk of the permanence and you've got to do it right. And then somehow when I move to pencil, it's like I'm changing things around and um, which it's it's a completely different medium. So just kind of adapt to a, a different different way of working. But there's maybe I should like put some ink on top of this. That could be interesting just to kind of like the, the boldness of the that, that direct quality of the ink is something which I enjoy so much. It just gives such a strength to it. So, yeah, I haven't done this, I think, but um, I might just ink on top of this. Something I thought about with the um, the Stilgar uh, piece, because um, for the thumbnail for this, I did like a little uh, digital color thing. And I was like, oh, this with a bit of watercolor like behind this, like just um, to give it a kind of texture. I feel like the boldness of that drawing with some watercolor, that would be like so cool. But um, maybe I'll have to try out that um, waterproof ink and see if that will work. Because uh, as you can see here, this, all, all of these midtones was just getting the, the ink wet. <laughs> So this is totally not waterproof, but you can work with it in a way which is, um, you know, really cool. Uh, all right. I'll put a timer on and see, let's, let's see if we can finish this in the next 10 minutes. How's everyone doing? Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you want to go back, if you want to finish, keep working on a different drawing or something, as Zan just had a great idea, you can just go back and grab, freeze it or grab a screenshot and then you can come back to the, and continue the conversation. <laughs> um, back to Paul. Yeah. Paul, that was a, I felt like a strong start. Duncan was <laughs> a challenging pose but um also fun <laughs> yeah 
What what did you find challenging about uh, Jessica? What what didn't work out? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Like I've I've made her eyes too small, her nose a bit long. Um, I still feel feel okay about the drawing, but um, yeah. Hi, Linda. You've made her look older. <laughs> Thanks for stopping in to say hi, Linda. Yeah, rewatch. We have some super cool reference to work from, so um, it'd be worth worth checking out because um, oh, I've been having a lot of fun. We've just done four portraits today, but it's yeah, it's been super fun. All right. So, my personal challenge to take the the boldness and confidence I have with ink, and for some reason I. I, I've 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 been super enjoying my my watercolor process and the way I've been discovering things, but there's something. Something about the directness of ink, which I would like to. Maybe maybe it's just a, a combination. Maybe that would be the thing: doing watercolor and ink. But I would also like to. Um, sometimes, not all the times, but um, but like move my watercolor in a direction where I have the same kind of boldness that I do with ink. Mm hmm yeah like that is something i that is a good idea <laughs> tom tom shepherd Cool, I would I'd definitely check him out, thanks. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the pieces I did for the, the course, that was, um, that was really cool. Like, I'm from, like from like a year ago, I've definitely pushed that that confidence um, with with my watercolor work much more. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Like at first glance it seems like black and white, but then there's like there's all of this there's so much going on in there. Yeah. Um Yeah, so this is like a, a little bit of uh, extra time just trying to wrap this up and once this is done, I will announce the winner of the giveaway. So hashtag I want to win. Um, and the odds are still pretty good. And um, if you would like to have Baron Vladimir Harkonnen hanging on your wall, then um, you could. Or <laughs> any of these. Maybe not the Baron, but... A few weeks ago, when I did the um, the the pink and orange uh, sketches, 
Um, I thought it was really interesting that um, the winner of the giveaway said, oh, that, that was technically so amazing, but the cat I would definitely put on my wall. And um, so I cho chose the cat. That, that, was, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess it would be. Um, <laughs> I know what you mean. Or like, <laughs> yeah, that Paul, Jessica, Duncan, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Billy Billy Harkonnen <laughs> um, yeah really cool I recommend again the the video that I've linked to in the description which has um, explanation of some of the Arabic words in um, the, the, also the names of the characters that some of them uh, have just Arabic words as names and, um, and it's, it's really cool. Yeah, but it's interesting like to think so far, so far into the future and I can't remember how much it is like it's like uh, some staggering amount of years into the distant future when 10,000 um, like just I don't know the, the kind of developments that have happened like, I guess it's it's impossible to think like in 10,000 years what are things going to be like but it's just the, the the thought experiment is so interesting of like um, the way humans have kind of gone out uh, colonizing space which is potentially like on on the the cusp of happening like at the moment and um like how would the present culture and our history kind of like extend and expand into the universe through tens of thousands of years if that were to eventuate And there's yeah okay that was ten minutes um I I feel better about this than ten minutes ago <laughs> just the the definition from from the ink is really interesting all right so I guess I guess that's it <laughs> um I th maybe we'll do another another June June stream sometime in the near future because um I still have like. 30 references I wanted to to work from. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I am about to find out who the winner is of the giveaway. Um, so 
I hope that you're all following me on Instagram if you use Instagram because um, that's the easiest way to get in touch. There's no direct way of like messaging on YouTube, but where there's a will, there's a way. If I announce your name as the winner and, um, and you see and um, yeah, get in touch. Uh, I will take down the reference. If you want to work longer on any of these, watch the replay. <laughs> Watch the whole thing again. That would be great. Or you can watch any number of other um, timed portrait sketch live streams that I have hosted. I just need to get. I need to get this automated. My process for finding the giveaway and announcing thing. What was your favorite portrait to work on? <clears throat> or what was your favorite result of mine? Um, as, as you're watching these things come into being. <clears throat> he's covered it with goo because he's in a spice bath, but it looks like a bath of oil. Um, and like the spice is the most valuable substance in the universe. And that's what they're on the desert planet to harvest, to extract. And He's just so wealthy that he's like in a bath of it. Yeah, he's recovering in the spice bath. But I like to think that he just likes hanging out in a bath full of this like um, most valuable substance. But yeah, it's like a recovery bath. Um. <laughs> Streamyard giveaway tool. There we go. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask questions as I'm doing this, and I will get to them in a moment. Um, and on Saturday, I'm going to do another live stream where I will focus on observational drawing techniques and practices which I hope is going to be super helpful for everyone who watches it. And it's, it's like, it's like lesson zero of my course, which is coming up, which is um, a series of pre-recorded tutorials doing observational drawing and watercolor portraiture. And the observational drawing, drawing by eye is a key part of the practice. And Saturday's live stream will be all about that. And, and everyone, is welcome to join. Um, all right, seven entries. That's a good number. <gasps> Maya W. Congratulations, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> cool. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for playing along. Thank you, everyone. Um, this was lots of fun. Um, and there's much more. <laughs> uh, I love you. Um, <laughs> so there, there are so many, so many more awesome things to draw in the world and also in this world. So um, Maya, you can you can let me know which one of these is your favorite and, and it will be yours. And every time I do one of these multi-portrait live streams, I give one away. If anyone would like to buy one, you could also buy one. And I've, I've been thinking and dreaming recently um, about auctioning work. And that is something that maybe I'll think about and get around to um, because uh, Nicholas Oribe had a really cool conversation and I had been thinking about it like just putting it out there and if people are interested because sometimes they just offer work and no one seems interested or maybe they don't even know that it's available but um, that's the thing I've been thinking about but basically everything I ever draw is available if if it's some if you would like to have if, if Maya doesn't want um, Baron Harkonnen and, and you like would just love this um, in your bathroom <clears throat> 
then uh, <laughs> but it, it could be yours. I'm happy, I'm happy to part with, with almost everything I've, I've ever drawn or painted. Um, this, this is definitely a, a bathroom image. Um, yeah, cool. Thank you, everyone. That, that was a lot of fun. I appreciate you all for being here. Amy, you got in late. You can watch the replay. <laughs> you are early for the replay. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. You are all super cool. And I would love to see the drawings that you have done throughout this, whether you're watching live or watching the replay. Um, use the hashtag drawing with Dylan, tag me at Dylan Sara. On TikTok, I'm Dylan Sara Draws. Um, if you make Instagram reels, uh, no, wait, what are they called? Face, no, I don't use Facebook much. Um, YouTube Shorts, which is where we are at the moment, YouTube. YouTube. Um, you, can, you can make your reels or shorts or TikToks and you can you can put them on every, every platform. Um, but tag me, you can tag me on YouTube as well. And a couple people have made YouTube Shorts and they've tagged me and I've made a little playlist and I thought it would be really cool to make a playlist of anyone who's sharing their work from these live streams on YouTube, then I'll make a little playlist of those as well. Um, thank you, everyone. That was fun. And until Saturday, um, definitely Saturday evening, uh, I'll be doing that observational drawing live stream and would love you to join. So see you there. Enjoy June if you haven't seen it yet and you feel tempted to do so. And if, you, um, if you've been holding back from saying all the things you want to say uh, because you didn't want to put spoilers in the chat, then you, you could just like get in touch with me and Lisa uh, and, and, and we can geek out about the, the June movies together. Um, cool. Take care, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, Zoomers. Thank you, everyone. Who